Greetings and welcome to Interfaith Today. I am Dee, an ordained Interfaith minister. On Interfaith Today, we discuss what various religions share in their tales, traditions, or texts about different stuff we think, we feel, or experience, as well as different social topics. Many of us believe in the religion that we grew up with, that our parents took us. If we went, I went to a Catholic church as a kid every Sunday. I was Catholic for a while. Some of us never went to church. We don't have a faith. It's okay. Interfaith today will share stories about many different paths to the same goal. And that goal is the same for all of us. It's joy. We all want to be happy. We all want to find love in ourselves and others. They're one in the same. This week's title is The Not-So-Friendly Caped Crusaders. Last night, Stephanie and I had a friend over for dinner, and as it often does, the conversation went to religion. Uh, this topic was unique, though. I don't know how it started, but we talked about the brutality associated with some religions. We talked about the Crusades. We talked about Muhammad's life. The things God did, the Guiana tragedy, etc. This violence committed by the followers of God or gods, or God or gods themselves, or prophets. It turns a lot of people off to mainstream faiths, whether it's old school like the Crusades or more modern day like the Catholic priests scandals and the violent Muslim extremists, perhaps, people get turned off. Yeah, God's done some crazy stuff. But is God, was God, the most violent God? How about the goddess Kali? Kali was bloodthirsty, literally. In Hindu mythology, the demon Raktabija that may be pronounced wrong. Raktabija. Raktabija was fierce. If a drop of his blood fell on the ground, another Raktabija would be born right there. Blood goes everywhere. There's a million of them. There's this a million mini me Raktabijas. But the goddess Kali had other plans. She simply cut off all the heads, lifted them above her own head, and drank the blood before it hit the ground. Game over, rock the brother. Of course, there is God, what burned whole cities like Sodom and Gomorrah, learned that in Genesis, ordered the destruction of Canaanite cities. We can just pass by the small stuff. He destroyed the whole world with a flood. Genesis as well. Hundreds of years of popes were part of the Crusades, which were a series of religious wars between Christians and Muslims. They started primarily to secure control of the holy sites. They were considered sacred by both Christians and Muslims. There were eight major crusade expeditions that happened over about 300 years, starting in the year 1096. These were ruthless conflict that propelled the status of Christianity. The Byzantines lost a lot of territory to the Turks. They went to bring in Pope Urban II. The Byzantine leader requested help, and at the Council of Clermont in 1095, Pope Urban II called on Western European Christians to take up arms to help Eastern European Christians recapture the Holy Land in the Middle East. What happened? <laughs> Everybody signed up. Military elite and ordinary citizens put the cross on their clothing and began the armed pilgrimage that would last in different forms for about 300 years. 17 popes after Pope Urban II began the Crusades, there was innocence. Or rather, Pope Innocent the Third. How messed up is that? He takes the name Innocent 
and rains hellfire all over Constantinople? That was the Fourth Crusade. Not only Muslims were the targets, but anyone who didn't believe, like the Christians, those who believed differently were called pagans. It was a derogatory term and is still used as a you are not as good as me term by some Catholics and Christians. But now paganism is accepted as a belief that centers around love for all, that all have a spirit, a divine spirit, and nature is to be appreciated and worshipped. It's an, it is as all-encompassing and peaceful as anything can be. We give thanks for whatever it is that is created in this great solar system, this amazing planet, and every single thing on it. That version of paganism is a far cry from raping and pillaging continents, isn't it? Animism, that resonates with me. Paganism, that resonates with me. Everything's sacred. I ain't better, I ain't worse. Everything has a spirit. Everyone gets to pick their own path. It certainly didn't resonate with Christians a thousand years ago. Many mainstream Christians still don't find acceptance of it or Catholics find acceptance of it or resonance in paganism despite their own scandal. And let us not forget Paul. He was the author of much of the New Testament. He was Saul of Tarsus before he converted and he murdered Christians. Prophet Muhammad killed, warred, violated. Fartana was a slave girl killed because she sang satirical songs about Muhammad. Another slave girl, Sarah, insults Muhammad in Mecca, killed. 627 AD, genocide. Orders about 900 Jews of a Medinan tribe killed. Whole tribe wiped out. Started in the morning, kept going into the evening by torchlight. Women and children were sold into slavery. They were exchanged for horses and more armor, so hey, we can pillage more. What about modern day? Try being a woman in Iran, Afghanistan, Yemen, Sudan, some of these other Sharia law countries. Hellish. Women can be beaten by their husbands if their husbands simply fear disobedience. Huh. Muhammad's so-called farewell address condones it. Females enjoy far fewer rights than males. Marriage and sex with prepubescent girls is permissible. Raping female captives is permissible. You miserable yet? Shocked. Yeah, bad stuff has been done in the name of religion. It will continue to be done in the name of religion. It will. Bad stuff will be done by people who don't believe. It still ain't cool. All right, let's try to get happier. How about Gypsy Smith? Let's get me happy. Gypsy Smith, he was born in a tent in London in 1860. Was a gypsy. Born in a tent, spent time in jail, played a guitar, played a flute. That's what gypsies do. Spent time in jail and was converted at the age of 17. William Booth of the Salvation Army found Gypsy and commissioned him. His real name was Rodney. And he commissioned Rodney to preach his first time in 1877. Gypsy had no formal education, taught himself how to read, started preaching on street corners. Very quickly, Gypsy Smith began to preach all over the world including on the front lines to allied troops in France. Who goes to the front line of war to help others? Hell, who goes down to Portland to help the homeless? I live near Portland. Who helps their neighbors? Let me ask a different question. Who's, who condemns all those who cause or don't do anything about poverty or want to support those on the fringe, but do nothing. That's probably a better question. Gypsy Smith did a lot. That's love, folks. Love is an action, not some 
pose on the back of a self-help book or a donation you make and then brag about. Gypsy Smith was as loving as they get. King George V knighted him. Rodney Smith worked with those on the fringe. Most notably, brought a lot of prostitutes in Chicago's red light district to believe in themselves and in a higher power. Pope Francis recently provided immediate financial support to transgender prostitutes who worked on the street in Italy and lost their ability to provide for themselves because of Pope COVID. That's love. Love is not criticizing addicts, drug pushers, gay or trans people, any prostitutes. Not cool. What, we're better than them? I'm sure at least some of us who have criticized them have forked over a few bills for a prostitute or some drugs. Let's save our common condemnation for the mirror if we must need, it to, need to give it to anyone. Gypsy Smith is a man. He's a man. How about Jesus? He never took a dime for his ministry. The Buddha gave up his royal family and path to the throne to become a peacemaker. Mother Teresa, she founded the Missionaries of Charity in 1950. Now has about 5,000 nuns and is active in over 130 countries. That's love. Her congregation manages homes for people who are dying of AIDS. They're dying of AIDS, TB, leprosy. They feed the hungry. They educate the poor. That's love. That's action. MLK was jailed 29 times for peacefully standing up to the men who claim to be faithful. And if not for an assassin's bullet, I'm sure it would have been at least 29 more times. Gandhi was well aware of the strife around him, but was always peaceful. Not for his own benefit, but for the sake of peace itself. Another bullet. Another good soul dead. I spent decades thinking I was all pious, but I was more like asshole. I focused on material goods myself not others, instead of having them. The quest for power and fame can never embrace with the quest for love. They can't coexist. Messengers are different than the messages. We can still verify before we trust. We need to trust action, not words. Actions show our compassion. Words say what we want people to think. Actions show what we are. It's quite easy to see if someone is really serving themselves or others. How do you do it, you may ask? We can look at life as if it were a silent movie. We have to figure out what the actor means by how they act, not by what they say. Hell, we don't even need subtitles. Trust the actions of others. That's what I do. If you're searching for love, harmony, and a path to a happiness you have never experienced, consider not tossing out the texts and tales of these religions, these faiths, these beliefs, but toss out bad actors. I'm five pages into this book. It's supposed to be an amazing book that that says it will change my life. In the first five pages, I've learned all about the dude's resume, his colleagues, the conferences he has spoke about, and I read two trademark statements of his. Jesus could have trademarked the word love. Didn't. Died. Is this going to change my life, or did I just give him 1298? so I can change his life. I don't know. Trust humbleness when you see it. Maybe we can change from just do it to do it justly. 
What was the motivation of those who killed in the name of love? I will call bullshit on anyone if they say it's anything other than to retain their personal power or the power of the club they belong to. What's your motivation? Do you want to find love? Do you want to find power? Do you serve others? Do you serve yourself? For every group of dark and dangerous leaders, spiritual, political, or otherwise, there are those who take nothing and give all. Their message is pretty pure. Love is our birthright. Love others, love ourselves, humble ourselves. If you want to turn off from all religion because you don't think it brings, or all beliefs or all faiths, because you don't believe there's a higher connection that we all share, then turn off. Anybody who condemns or criticizes you would not be loving. That's your choice. But if you turn off and complain because popes, kings, and queens or so-called prophets or police did bad stuff, so you're going to complain? You'll never get me to believe you're turning from the message because you don't want a higher connection. No matter how flowery your words are. Because if you did not want a higher connection, you wouldn't expect more from other people. If there's no higher connection, wouldn't this behavior, no matter how despicable, be understandable? We're just out for ourselves? Popes and priests may have acted as evil as people can act, but they also spoke of flowery love. Love that smells, that we want to taste, that we want to hold that flower. And they walk the walk. If you're going to talk the talk, walk the walk. Jesus, Mother Teresa, Muhammad and Muammar Gaddafi, they have made some bad deals, did some bad stuff. But Yusuf Islam, Muhammad Ali, Rooney, they walk the walk. Some Hindu gods and goddesses, yeah, they're violently fierce, but Gandhi, was passive and nonviolent. He was active in voice and service. Men and women choose their own path. And no one, no one will say, I'm greedy, violent, and murderous. But we know that greedy people exist in action. We know that violent people exist in action. And we know that murderous people have existed and exist in action. They have throughout history. So if you want happiness and you can't find it on your own and you, you kind of have, can have condemned any type of spiritual connection or religious opportunity in their texts or tales or traditions, I don't know, maybe give them a shot if you can't find happiness. Don't shoot them. Because humans wear the t-shirt or holster weapons of violence. If one truly does not want to put their hope into a religion that has had times of violence, maybe wrap your loving arms around some of them that have had zero times of violence, like animism, Jainism, Sikhism, modern paganism, to name a few. And if you want to remove all religion because you feel negative about it, it's not going to happen. Because too many people, myself included, get way too much comfort from connecting with people who are in the same agreement as I, that we have love that connects us, that there's this holy divine spirit that connects us. I can't believe any, any differently. Too many people get too much comfort of it. Faithful people are here to stay no matter what our colleagues do or our ancestors did. We know the difference between word and action. And when they flow as one, oh, baby, 
That harmony is some sweet, sweet sound. I am not condoning the nasty stuff they ain't done in the name of religion. I'm supporting the sage advice shared by these great books and some leaders, though. Even though some have been corrupted by their own power. Instead of serving those on the fringe, the sick, the poor, the orphaned, the widowed, the addicts, the homeless, they serve themselves. I get it. I still support that connection, that higher connection. I guess this is my angry podcast. I don't know. Got a little loud. If you're going to complain about a religion, I'm probably sure you complain about other stuff. It's hard to have use for complainers in a world that desperately needs supporters. We don't have to like each other. We don't have to all think the same way. God knows I don't want some human picking the path we all need to go down. We all must think this way. We should, if we really want to live in harmony, accept that all have equal God-given rights to believe whatever they want, whatever we want, even if others find it morally contemptuous. I don't want some diehard, you only count if you believe like me, Democrat, Republican, Christian, Muslim, or Yankee fan telling me I have to be like them. When I hear that from people instantly, I think, I don't want to be like you. You think you're better. You condemn everybody who doesn't think like you. Uh -uh. When we condemn others and think we're the best group, all we do is add more junk to that trash heap of fear and hatred. And we actively set it on fire. When we condemn with opinions, we bark out as facts. Oh my. <laughs> for my entire life, here's the thing that gets me. I've listened to every politician running for president the last 40 something years, 53. Like, when they run against an incumbent, they all say, I'll close the unfair tax loopholes. How can we listen to people continuously say that they're going to close these loopholes unless nobody closed them or they never existed? or they want them to exist for their own exploitation. I digress. Don't get me started on lying to gain power. The only fact that matters is love. No one on their deathbed is wishing they closed a tax loophole or made more money. Love matters. Love rules. We all want it. We all want it. If we can't get behind a religion, or a belief system, okay, let's be loving and respectful to those who do get behind faith. But if, if religion is not for you, maybe you can be a crusader for kindness still, because you don't need a cross around your neck to be kind. This seems like a pretty good place to stop, back girls and boys. And any other fat gender you subscribe to. I am your friendly neighborhood spider person, Reverend D. And this has been Interfaith Today. May your week and life be filled with kindness. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.